Hi there, my name's Abby Farley in Second Life um, and for the last four or five years I guess um, I've been doing quite a lot of um, Second Life photography. I've done one tutorial before um, which was quite a while ago now and I thought it was time to do something um, new but I wanted to do something a bit different. This is a really, it's going to be a really back to basics um, tutorial so for a lot of you it's really going to be going over stuff you already know but I wanted to um, do a tutorial on the basic settings how to get things set up so you can take good quality high definition pictures from the get-go because obviously there's any if you've got a really useless quality picture um, and it's got nothing to do with your particular skills or talents I'm talking about a low definition um, badly set up picture then no matter what you do with it in Photoshop it's going to be impossible to put back in any kind of um, graphical quality so I'm just going to go over the settings that I use um, I'm not saying and, and my programs and my um, sort of HUDs and the way I do things and I'm not of course saying that the way I do things is is the best way or um, even a good way it's just the way that I do it and so that's the only way I can show you because that's the only way I know um, feel free to take bits that you want to take and ignore the rest that's absolutely fine let's start up with the settings that you're going to need to put into place before you even think about taking any snapshots now the first thing we want to do is we want to press Control alt d on our keypad and that brings up the advanced menu and, it, and this is in Firestorm it's the same um, with most viewers that I know about um, so I'm just gonna go through Firestorm because it's what I know so in the advanced menu you see mine already, these two options really ticked we want high res snapshot ticked quiet snapshots ticked and then you can also tick disable camera constraints and make sure limit select distance is unticked so that's the advanced options sorted now we're going to have a look at our graphics settings now this will depend somewhat on your graphics card and your system I haven't got an amazing computer it's an i5 um, and my graphics card is I'm not sure I'll put in what my graphics card is later so we want to bring up our graphics menu um, and hopefully you should be able to get to that okay <laughs> right so um, we have these four settings here ticked that's transparent water although it's not really necessary um, bump mapping and shiny is necessary local lights isn't necessary when we're not working with shadows but I have it on anyway um, basic shaders everything else I'm ticked um, some people um, might wonder why I don't have atmospheric shaders turned on atmospheric shaders are great when you're working with anything that's not an AVI <laughs> it's just not kind to avatars it creates those um, those shadows and those dark areas on avatar space that really aren't um, or it completely um, over lights your subject instead it's just I don't write with it I don't think it, it works very well um, boom, 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 boom. draw distance I have mine set up a little way but you can set that down as far as you as you need it, it's not a factor here um, particles I always have off um, maximum number of non imposter avatars this depends on if you're doing a picture of one person or a group I usually have mine set to about eight that seems to be a comfortable number um, post process quality set to high and then with the level of detail distance factors everything up to the top apart from avatar physics because I don't have that turned on the terrain you can probably set that down to low it doesn't affect anything um, with avatar photography avatar imposters I have on um, avatar imposters in case you don't know it's um, when you have this setting here the non-imposter avatars set down to say one 
what avatar imposters are is when there's more than one avatar on your screen or in your draw distance it basically doesn't completely render the avatar it just makes them very, you know if you've ever seen those avatars with sort of very jagged edges that's what that's what that is that's a really bad explanation but yeah it's not really imp imp imperative to what we're talking about um ignore that um so we can apply that and then we can go into a hardware settings um i have um anisotropic on but you don't need it on it doesn't it doesn't really do much um you do want to have vbo um enable opengl vbo that ticked um and enable stream v vbos um don't need to your cd said blah 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 anti-aliasing okay this is maybe the most important um anti-aliasing will make or break your picture because anti-aliasing controls the smoothness of the edges of your avatar of objects um having said that you don't necessarily want to go oh well you know straight up to 16 it doesn't work like that you can only have it set to an appropriate amount for your graphics card for mine i am usually happy with um times four but do some experimenting with it um set it to um, times four see how it looks um zoom it in really close in photoshop or gimp or whatever you're using and then try times eight and compare compare the two so then we're going to apply right and okay so that is our settings all set up until we get to the snapshot settings so now would be a really good time i think to take you through the tools that i use of course there are um, different options um, these are just the ones that i find to be true and tested the pose stand system I use is Serenade and I've used it literally for years since almost the beginning of my second life photography experiences I've used Serenade. I just find them really simple to use um, they don't do you know anything ridiculous they just do what they need to do and I, and I really like that and I love that it comes with this very simple again um, easy to use there's no learning curve um hard and i'll show you how that works i'll just hop on and this comes as copy mod so you can make as many i mean i have about 10 of these copy with different poses in um so that is very handy and it is literally a case of right clicking resing your pose down right clicking it and then dragging your poses across Okay, so that is the post down system I use, and it's very simple. You just click the arrows to change those. And then it also has um, an option to hide the post down in case you're doing full length or shoes or something and you want to get rid of that. You can also, if you don't want to manually rotate the post down, which to be honest, I usually do you can use that tool um then you've got the up and down arrows which move the post like so it's really simple it's very sort of self-explanatory um and then you've got this big arrow and it just bobs you up and down and then the reset which just resets everything but it also resets <laughs> resets to the immediate position the post down was raised in so it's not necessarily something that you want to press when you've got a, a client or something on the um on the post down but um there we go so that's the serenade post down really very easy um it's modifiable so you can change the arrow color which is what i do so you know which post down is what so that's the post down um any pose i i need to find out how much this costs because if I remember, it's either free or it's silly cheap, and it is just perfect. Let me find a pose that is maybe more suitable for like a headshot. Okay, 
let's say we were going to use this pose for a headshot. Now, Second Life eyes are notoriously difficult to work with. They're either up in the back of your skull or they're, you know, completely in the wrong direction. And what this Any Pose HUD allows you to do is lock your eyes. So you've got different, different eye positions. Now this will look a bit different on your avatar because I have edited my I'm wearing mesh eyes and I don't like how um, eyes in Second Life by default seem to sit like really high on your head. Um, like your pupil is almost always roll back and I hate it. So I've modified my eyes so they sit sort of lower. Now this is something that happens with this hub that you will just have to learn how to um, undo your eyes will shut every now and again and the way that you reset that is just by clicking this I or E button here okay so you can set that let's have a look let's set it set it I don't know there I guess um, okay that's the eyes you've also got expressions um, just the standard Second Life expressions, nothing really much to say there. Um, the great thing though, another great thing about this HUD is that it control it lets you control your hands. Now depending on the pose priority it might not work with all your poses. Um, I don't know whether it will work with this one but let's have a look. It's left, yeah, no it won't, okay. Um, but if you've got a lower priority pose, it will let you change your hand. I wonder if it'll work if I turn my AO off. No, okay. Right, um, so yeah, if you've got a lower priority pose, that will let you modify your hands. Um, oh, yes, and of course, with the puppet option, you can use this to use it on someone else if there's somebody else in your draw distance um, or within a certain amount of meters 15 meters or something you'll have another button here where you can just press um, just remember that when you finish with a client just to stop adding them so they don't leave the studio still with their hands and eyes in weird positions so that's that now let's get on to the business of actually taking a snapshot the first thing I want to cover is zooming in Second Life, um, pertaining to Second Life photography. Most people will zoom either using their view controls or how I always used to do it, by holding your alt key on your keyboard and pressing your left mouse button and using that to zoom. I want to teach you the better way a far far better way. What you do is just reset your zoom and then use your alt mouse method to get to a you know a reasonable distance. Then I want you to press control and then on your keyboard and then the zero numerical zero key and use that and press that repeatedly and as you can see it zooms in. And you, to reset that, you can press Control and then 9 on your keypad. So let me show that again. Press Control and then it's the 0 key. I usually do it four times. Um, I don't know why. I just find that that works for me. And then use your Alt mouse movements to um, perfect your camera position. Um, looks to me. Mm. Don't know about these eyes. Okay, well let's just, do, let's just ignore it. Okay, so let's say that I'm happy with how my, um, the position of my camera and I want to take a snapshot. What we do, you want to press control, shift, S, and that'll bring up the snapshot. 
might take a moment because it for some reason takes a snapshot or loads a snapshot immediately now again this is going to be slightly different depending on what your view you're using um, but hopefully it will be self-explanatory once you know how to use how to do it on Firefox Firestorm sorry so we want to go to the disk tab because we're saving this to, a, to your hard drive make sure that your dimensions are set to custom and then at the very minimum we need to be shooting at 3000 times 3000 that's at the very minimum the best way to do it is find out what dimensions your screen size is and then times it by four or three three at the minimum um, but I usually shoot, depending on what kind of picture I'm doing, I usually shoot at 3000 times 3000 because that's just what works for me. But the bigger the better. Make sure that the format you're saving to is, I personally find ping works better, but you might find that um, bitmap works better for you. Again, take a picture um, with each setting and compare. So then when we're happy with our dimensions, the size, and we're happy with our format, then it's just a matter of hitting save. And that will save it to your hard drive. And that is pretty much that. The only thing that I wanted to um, talk about is um, the green screen that I use. Now, literally, it's two prims paint <laughs> green I don't think that those expensive studios that are being that are sold are worth it um, I don't use backgrounds um, in Second Life I just shoot on a green screen so for me it's just I might as well just res two prims where I want it and that works fine of course if you do want to shoot with um, different backgrounds then you might find one of those studios is worth it for you but you certainly don't need to spend out, you know, thousands of lindens on a studio. It's just ridiculous and not necessary if you're just using a green screen. And that is pretty much that. I can't think of anything else that sort of is imperative to basic snapshot taking in Second Life. Obviously, these settings are specifically for um, av shooting avatars, um, settings for taking... Um, wind light pictures, shadow pictures and um, landscape pictures will be slightly different but I can maybe do sort of another tutorial covering those settings at another time. If you do have any questions about um, taking pictures in world please leave a comment below and I will do my best to answer them for you and you can also contact me in world anytime um, and I'll do my best to help. I hope you found this useful and um, if you want to see a tutorial and anything else to do with Second Life Photography, again, please leave it as a suggestion in the um, comments below. Um, thanks guys, and I'll see you again.